हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग केस ऑफ पोस्ट्रिपुलर कैट्रैक वेयर the posterior capsule is already open and you can see that the lens matter has already entered the burger space here and anterior segment oct is quite useful in checking the status of posterior capsule in these cases where you are suspecting ppc you can write the exact stage of ppc whether the posterior capsule appears intact or if there is a dehiscence or posterior capsule is not visible so if you see on anterior segment that the posterior capsule is you know intact then the chances of pc opening are really less in these cases but when you have posterior capsule which is hidden by the dense plaque then the chances of dehiscence are more and like in this case you can also see already existing dehiscence of posterior capsule so here the patient is usually these patients are young where the capsular dehiscence is already there so the cataract is soft but you need to be very careful so i'm using the callisto system here so i've used its uh, this uh, capsular axis marker here where uh, i have set it for 5 mm but we can also use the uh, corneal marker where we can use 5.5 or 6 mm ring and press it on the cornea i have shown it in other videos the idea here is to have around 4.8 mm axis which is best in case you have to do optic capture with 3 psi now i am going to use this blunt slightly wider iris repositor as you can see and i am going till the equator of the lens so this is mechanical dissection so the position of this iris repository is between anterior capsule and the cortex and you can see that i have overlapped the movements of two sides so that even in the sub incisional area the cortex and the epinucleus is completely separated from the capsule which really helps in epinucleus removal later a very very careful hydro delineation and if you have noticed i removed some ovd before i did hydro delineation the idea is to keep the chamber pressure always maintained and that's the reason why i have used 36 ml of mercury iop here i am using a centurion system so it has active fluidics but even if you have gravity based fluidics keep the bottle height to around 70 to 75 cm and adjust your other parameters like flow rate and vacuum accordingly so reduce the flow rate reduce the vacuum and keep the bottle height low so as you have noticed that when i entered the anti chamber with my feco probe the ac didn't deepen as we expect in young patients and then the aspiration is easy because i have done the hydro delineation it's already separated but because i have kept low parameters i am going to go slow release it from all side uh, this nucleus and uh, then take it out completely so the the primary principle of managing a posterior polar cataract is to maintain the anterior chamber as it is throughout the case so even if you maintain that for you know say 99% of the time and for that one you know split second if you allow the anterior chamber to either collapse or become very deep you will have posterior capsule rupture now here the capsule is already dehiscent in these cases many times the edges of the open posterior capsule are fibrotic but still they can extend further the aim here is to place the il in the bag so i want to make sure that it doesn't extend further when i removed the probe uh, again you can see that i exchanged the bss with ovd and that is another very important maneuver in these cases 
this is a vlog so you can just go back and see how i entered with seiko pro how i exited and how i maintained the anti chamber all the time so i'm going for the sub initial cortex and epinucleus first so because that is the area which is difficult if suppose the pc opens up any time that is the area which is uh, difficult to you know remove the epinucleus or cortex from so that is the one which i first removed and then i am going uh, 360 degree to remove the cortex and now you can see that the edges of that posterior capsular opening are fibrosed but still as i said you should never take chances in these cases because if it rips open then there are chances that you may not be able to place the ial in the back and that is something i want to avoid in this case now here just watch this ritual here i am going to use the ovd in my non dominant hand and this is something you should do in normal cases so you get used to it as i inject the ovd i stop the irrigation and i then i redraw the probe now as i realize that apart from the open posterior capsule the posterior capsule is also opaque so i need to do a posterior capsule rexis so i made a nick using cystitome at this point also you have to maintain the anterior chamber so i am going to use here hpmc to maintain the chamber and here the edge of the posterior capsule rexis kind of lost into that opacity and i was not able to grab it further i am just again maintaining the anterior chamber with ovd in between i tried to grab it uh, but because of lack of proper visibility i was not able to grab it so i changed my hands and tried to do it on the other side and uh, i succeeded now in case of posterior capsular rexis you don't have the option of staining it unless in and like in anterior capsule so you have to rely on good red reflex and in this case like you can see there are few opacities in the burger space it is hindering my view so another way to tackle this is just use the vitrectomy probe to create the opening but if you want to place the ial in the bag it's always better if you have a manual capsular axis because the edges will be stronger so after placement of the iol the it will never extend so that's the advantage of it so i tried to complete it using my other hand so i made a nick on other side and tried to kind of make the posterior capsule from other side again that went into the same area where it was not visible but i felt that now i have completed now i have shifted to anti vitrectomy 5000 cut rate because this is a very high speed cutter which is excellent for these maneuvers i have kept vacuum of 500 but probably i would have kept it little bit on lower side and maybe in a linear fashion using a good new cutter is always helpful in these cases particularly young patient because the vitreous is well formed so here the first i kept the port towards the retina as i uh, you know inserted the vitrectomy probe and then i moved around so that you know i can cut the anti vitreous and those opacities from the around the anti hyaloid basically once i'm sure that the anti vitreous is all cleared then again the plan is to place the ial in the back so take your time in doing all the steps all these complex cases you should never hurry up with the steps like here also i have made sure that there is anti chamber is maintained and here i use a cohesive ovd because when i am using cohesive ovd now and after placement of the iol it's easier to remove that ovd so in the initial steps i use disperse ovd to replace the bss but in the last step after doing the anti vitrectomy i use cohesive ovd so it displaces the previous disperse ovd and also now once i place the iol in the bag i can remove that ovd easily as compared to a disperse ovd now here usually i try to place the ial in the sulcus or in the anterior chamber first 
this is to avoid sometimes what happens if you try to place it directly into the bag with the pc being open if you don't have control over the iol insertion it might just you know get dragged through the open posterior capsule area so to be on safer side i always make sure that i inject it in the anterior chamber all in the sulcus and then uh, using the forceps i am going to place it carefully into the bag and here because the glow i felt was slightly less i was not getting good visibility and many times when you don't have good visibility you tend to miss the landmarks but once you carefully watch it you will be able to place it in between the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule that is the plan here and using forceps in these cases always helps because if you try to use uh, two sinski hooks it is also another good technique but sometimes you may not have uh, as good control as a forceps may have so it's always handy to use uh, forceps these micro forceps are very important tools uh, in your cataract surgery set because you will need it for many purposes and for maneuvering you should always have it it's always better than using a big forceps like macpherson or other forceps because with these micro forceps the anterior chamber maintenance is better and now i realize that on one side of the posterior capsule opening which i have created there is little bit tag of posterior capsule so i just want to remove it complete it before i do ovd removal because uh, again as i said i don't want it to extend into the periphery and that's done now remember i have used cohesive ovd behind the iol there is still dispersive ovd in front of the iol which i have injected earlier so i am going to first wash out that here i am going to use again low iop maybe 35 36 and uh, that is why you can see that the anterior chamber never deepened during the procedure so that is another very very important thing many times we focus a lot on not allowing the chamber to kind of collapse or become shallow but i have seen that if you over inject ovd try to make the chamber a lot deeper that also can open up a posterior capsule in posterior polar cataracts so that's the end of the case i'm just making sure that the iol is placed right in the bag and uh, anti capsule is overlapping the optic and this is how the patient looks after a month a great outcome patient is quite happy patient had this posterior polar cataracts since childhood so it's bit amblyopic but still patient got 20 by 40 vision for more such videos do keep watching my youtube channel and do subscribe thank you